everyone and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 235. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out the podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from and I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your date to chat about those things with me. So yes, uh, no real big announcements this week, uh, but I should, because I always forget to at the beginning of every episode, flash on the screen where you can find me on the interwebs, uh, as I like to call it. Uh, I am most active on Instagram, I am obviously on Ravelry, and a couple of other social outlets, but mainly on those two avenues. So uh, yes, please feel free to get in touch. I will say the best way to get in touch with me is email if you would like a timely response, because if I, if you PM me on Ravelry or Instagram or anywhere else, I'm chances are I'm not going to see it and not get back to you as quickly as I should if at all. So email is key. Uh, so yeah, otherwise no real big announcements except for maybe shop update where I have some really exciting news. So stick around for that if you feel so inclined. But yes, other than that, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very chill week. I took Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off just, just to have some me time, some, some time to recharge and just work on what I want to work on. Uh, I, because, uh, lately I just feel like I've been on a hamster wheel that has not stopped rotating if you catch my drift uh you know great like I, I love my job but i just feel like as working from home and just being that being constantly surrounded by work it's it's just i i forget sometimes just to take some time uh to myself and i i honestly cannot remember the last time that i i took a me time vacation <laughs> or a staycation or a matecation so it was it was long overdue and i decided just to you know put a cog in the wheel temporarily and just slow my roll because I think I think all of us need to do that sometimes otherwise we just we just go a little crazy so but anyway uh it, that was really relaxing uh, I got to work on my shawl design which I'm very excited about uh, I'm not disclosing anything about it yet but I'm very excited about it and cannot wait to share something with you guys because every time I work on it it just makes me so giddy and excited so yay um so there was that and then yeah I just I got some knitting done obviously I just watched some stuff on Hulu and Netflix and it was it was wonderful so uh yeah otherwise yeah nothing nothing much else to write home about other than my allergies have been attacking me the struggle is real uh so <laughs> I'm sure many of you can relate if things are blooming and sprouting up around you like outside we have the trees are finally green I feel like within a week everything just bloomed and you know the pollen and everything anyway um yeah so anyway allergies are 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 here and i cannot wait for them to go uh because yeah as i mentioned the struggle is real but anyway um enough babbling uh let's move on to what's off my needles first if any of you are wondering uh, i am drinking out of my favorite go away i'm introverting mug uh and i'm just drinking some you guys are fine that you guys are my people so you don't have to go away it's just the other people who don't understand. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, I'm drinking some David's Tea uh, pumpkin cheesecake, which I love. It's my favorite. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yay. Okay, on to what I am wearing because I'm wearing my finished object. And if you follow me on social media on Instagram, you've probably seen photos of this. Uh, and I am so happy to be done with it, you guys. <sighs> It's done. This is my snow melt shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade Designs. And this was a mystery knit along as you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about it every week, but uh, this is the snow melt shawl. It was a mystery knit along. It has since been consolidated. I just, I just like saying the word consolidated clearly. Um, so it's one pattern now you can purchase it and you know, see other people's versions of it. But uh, it is done and it is quite epic. It is an epic shawl. Whee! It is done. I blocked it yesterday uh, and yeah, blocking was no small feat. That was a project. Uh, I think it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to, well, I soaked it and then yeah, 15 to 20 minutes to just, uh, I forget the word, but anyway, it's when you really stretch something out and block it. And this, I want to say, grew two times the size it was when I finished, when I, when I bound everything off. So yeah, I am smitten with this. Uh, <laughs> So cool. Uh, and this is my hand dyed yarn, Volenvine Yarns, in on my new Vaux base, which is a 100% superwash 
uh, merino in a uh, single ply and this colorway is my Poe base, the gray, light shaded gray, and then this purple was for my sock club. It was Moonburn, which will be available in a couple of months uh, because the sock club just ended. And then this peachy one is uh, Aphrodisiac, which was a one-off colorway, kind of uh, my free swim color. One of, it was a free swim colorway, which is a colorway that cannot be repeated, just a one-of-a-kind uh, colorway basically, but I do have another colorway that's very similar to it. Uh, it's called tea leaves So uh, be on the lookout for that. I will be dying more of that next week in case any of you any of you are curious um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about this shawl other than it was just so fun to knit I mean, it seems huge and epic uh, Other than it taking forever to knit uh, I will say it was just so enjoyable to work on very intuitive and just very potato chippy and yeah, I cannot say any more wonderful things about this pattern. Uh, all of Helen's patterns are the best. So uh, she just released uh, Shawl Society 2, uh, which is a six month pattern collection. So every month you're gonna get a free pattern in the mail and I subscribe to that. Your revelry, your revelry mail, you will get a update with a new pattern. And uh, she just released the Fairy Hill Shawl and I, I really want to cast this on. However, um, I want to cast it on for the Move Along, which I am co-hosting with Shauna from the Adelaide Cottage podcast. I know I'm jumping different topics, but yes, I'm doing a Move Along, which is a knit along. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm co-hosting with uh, Shauna uh, from, it kicked off, when was it? May, May 1st and it's going all the way through July. June, July. Yeah, um, May 1st through July 1st. So uh, yeah, basically knit from your stash, buy, buy new yarn, anything mauve, anything you want to knit with, spin with, weave with, crochet with, anything mauve, knit it, you know? So it, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, and I, the intention was for me to knit uh, the Fairy Hill shawl, which was the first pattern from the Shawl Society. And appropriately living in my, <laughs> my bags by, is it bags by Donna? Donna's, Donna's creations, I think. Oh, Donna's designs. I'm sorry. Donna's designs. She did a collaboration with um, Sharon from the Knit Style podcast and uh, Knit Style Yarns, and yeah, they Sharon uh, dyed the yarn, and then Donna made these bags, and they go so well for the move along. Uh, so appropriately, I put the yarn in. I, the yarn that I plan on casting on for the Very Hill Shawl is living in uh, this beautiful movish bag so uh and the yarn i intend on using for the fairy hill shawl is this beautiful yarn that i purchased at edinburgh yarn festival and let me make sure it's right side up okay and this is eden cottage yarns uh and this move movie color is uh bfl sock in the cottage originals colorway and uh this yellow golden one is marigold so I'm gonna use this for the main body of the shawl and then this to contrast at the, uh, the lace does a, a change at the bottom. So I'm gonna use that for the kind of like the lacy border of the shawl. And uh, the shawl actually calls for beads, which you guys, I love knitting with beads. It's a slow but steady prog, it's a slow but steady process, but it makes such a difference in your knitting. Um, it just adds that little extra sparkle that makes it so pretty. So I purchased these uh, from Amazon, like you do. Um, they're kind of like in a, I don't know, shoddy little bag, but uh, they're like these really multi, like really beautiful multicolored move beads. And they're six slash zero, they're size six slash zero. Uh, and I'm going to use like a size, I guess, 10. I don't know what it is in millimeters, but I have a boy crochet hook that is has like a super tiny uh, head to it and I'm going to use that to crochet the beads on. Uh, and if you are interested in, in learning to knit with beads, I do have a tutorial. It's on YouTube. I will link to it in the show notes. Uh, but yeah, so far it's gotten a lot of good feedback and people found it helpful. So, you know, if you are considering knitting with beads, uh, you know, check it out. Um, cause, yeah. And so, yeah, that is a project. I'm, I want to cast this on immediately but I'm kind of wanting to finish some other projects first. I have another shawl that I'm working on, um, but let me see, do I wanna say anything else about this other than I'm smitten, I'm in love with it. Um, I don't really know how else to wear it other than this, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful and I love it. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in love. <laughs> 
So anyway, uh, highly recommend, I highly recommend the pattern. Uh, yeah, but anyway, okay, moving along. Uh, I do, as I mentioned, I have another project, aside from the, my shawl design, which I've pretty much been monogam monogamously working on this week. Um, but I do have a, an update to share with you about uh, another shawl that I have kind of put to the wayside for a couple of weeks because, um, well, living in this awesome skull-tastic project bag from the lovely and amazing Meryl. Thank you so much again, Meryl, for um, gifting, this to, gifting this to me. This is an amazing project bag. It's, it holds so much. So, um, but as I mentioned, I was knitting the eyeball shawl by Stephen West, another awesome pattern, uh, super fun. Again, totally, totally out of my comfort zone as far as patterns go, but it looked like it was so fun to knit and I wanted in on the fun, so I cast one on. And here it is so far. So here's the eyeball. I mean, <laughs> the the uh, ir the pupil and the iris. So here we go. Here's the pupil, and this is skinny dipping yarns in her space pants. I can never say that. I can never say space pants. Space pants colorway. <laughs> and then for the iris uh, is her olives colorway. And then for the sclera is La Bien M.A. in her gateway purple colorway. And I already, um, my dilemma with this was, uh, b because I only had purchased one skein of it at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and when I had, I had decided that I wanted this colorway to be used for the sclera, uh, a lovely viewer informed me that I'm probably gonna want two skeins because, yeah, I'm not gonna have enough yarn to knit the sclera out of this yarn. So I, I hopped on the interwebs and, uh, I purchased another skein of yarn uh, from, I'm forgetting what the shop name is, I'll put it in the down bar, but um, yeah, it was it was an international order. I did have to, I, I would say shipping wasn't terrible, I forget what I paid, but nothing, in, nothing too insane. Um, but I purchased uh, a second skein of it, they had it in stock, and it took a while for it to get here because it got trapped in customs. And, uh, but it finally came here. I, as you can see, I already cast it on, but the idea was, um, I don't know if I wanted to alternate skeins. I think I did because it's, you know, yeah, I, I probably will be alternating skeins. That's why I ordered a second skein. Uh, because when you're dealing with hand-dyed yarn, uh, you don't know. Because, like, no, again, no, no two skeins are alike, even though they're the same colorway. The placement of the yarn could be, uh, the placement of the dye could be more frequent in, uh, more abundant in one skein and not so much in the other. So the the thing to do is basically alternate between skeins every couple of ro rows. So the skein finally came in the mail and it looks pretty on point with what the skein that I had purchased in Edinburgh or I had cast on with. So yeah, here it is. Again, this is Gateway Purple on her Merino Singles base. And it is so delicate and so fun. I love this colorway. So I think I'm, you know, even though I cast on already, I'm, I'm just gonna wind this up and then just start alternating uh, between both skeins. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm so glad it finally came. Uh, I guess I'm, I should probably save this for stash enhancement, but since I'm talking about the purchase already, I made it kind of worth my while. Uh, I was just kind of browsing around their website and uh, I saw a skein of hedgehog fibers. I know I can get hedgehog fibers here in the States, but I don't know. I fell in love with this colorway and I was like, I kind of want it now. And I don't know, I didn't feel like hopping on a train to get it. I know I'm so lazy, but anyway, uh, yeah, I purchased this skein also along with my, um, my purchase of La Bien Aimee. It's her uh, hedgehog fibers daydream and I really, really like this. I love how it has kind of like a subtle like lavender base and then just these little pops of neon in it. So, yay. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's where I am with my, my eyeball shawl. Uh, so I want to give that some love this week uh, before I cast on um, another shawl. Uh, <laughs> because yeah, I have a lot of shawls going. I have a lot of sweaters that need to be finished. I have a lot of shawls that need to be finished. Um, I was kind of thinking about, I know this is going to sound terrible, but kind of frogging my Belmont cardigan, uh, which I I started knitting in February and I was having so much fun knitting it. And then again, with the alternating skein thing, uh, I don't know, I'll try and insert a photo of the cardigan here, but I know you, if you recall in previous episodes, I, as I was knitting on it, I realized that the dye lots for both skeins were totally off and you could 
not not totally off but you could tell like there was a shift in the colorway when I switched skeins uh, so I was like this isn't gonna bother me I'm fine with it it's no big deal whatever I can live with it but the more I just let it marinate and sit and I I just find that I'm not wanting to work on it because I know in my mind I'm just like that's going to bother me later that's really going to bother me so <laughs> I'm toying with the idea of frogging it <laughs> so scary I don't know but um anyway uh yeah I don't know that's that's still marinating but I think that's what's what it's going to come down to uh otherwise it's just a wonderful pattern I just that one detail just kind of yeah really I find that it really does irk me so I'm gonna I'm gonna rip it out I think uh oh well um yeah anyway but what else did I want to talk about um did I just dip into my Brooklynese <laughs> Jeez. okay um yeah, so I think that is pretty much it for what I am currently knitting. Uh, I do have my spinning from my mini from the mini scrap along, uh, knit along, spin along, make along that uh, Tommy from the um, goodness, why well, can I remember it? Squirrel Pie Productions podcast. She's hosting a mini scrap along where you know just knit knit all your minis or you know uh, any scraps that you have left over spin some spin some bumps of fiber that you have lying around or mini bats what have you so i'm partaking in the fun because i really want to get back into spinning i miss it uh it's a lot of fun it's very relaxing granted i have not finished spinning this tiny ounce of fiber that i had but i have made progress so if you recall this is a uh a fiber bat that I purchased, or one of three fiber bats that I purchased from Hobbly Hoy many, many moons ago. Uh, here's where I am. Um, I'm spinning singles right now, but uh, yeah, this is I, I'm quite a healthy cop right now. Uh, but I already spun up half the bat. See that? I spun up half the bat, so this is a ball of singles. I want to say about 0 0.5, 0 0.5 grams. So that's spun up, and then after I'm done spinning this, uh, I'm just gonna two ply it together and have you know just a lovely little mini skein that I can probably crochet into my granny stripe blanket, uh, which hasn't really been getting much love. I've been crocheting on it on and off, so it's not worth showing off on the podcast. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, yeah, it's been it's been living in my project bag that Jilly from the Knitting Broomstick podcast gifted to me, and I love it so. Yay! Oh, and my spindle, if you're curious, is a Bosworth spindle. It's about, I want to say like one point, a little over one one ounce, because that's what I like to use for spinning uh, very fine fine singles. So, yeah. Um, otherwise, that, yeah, that is it for what's um and off my needle. So, I feel like it's been a very productive week. Um, but, yes, moving along, uh, I do have some... Um, dream knitting that I want to share with you guys uh but first I before I forget because I totally dropped the ball last week I was supposed to announce a giveaway uh for stress knits uh who's Stacy of the stress stress knits blah, wow uh the stress knits podcast hosted by Stacy she also has stress knits yarn and she so wonderfully uh, gifted me a skein of this yarn and then also donated a skein as a giveaway prize uh, for one of you lovely viewers. And I was supposed to announce the winner last week and totally forgot, I'm so sorry. Uh, but I left the thread open for an extra week and uh, the prompt was, let me know what made you happy uh, this week or last week. And you guys, I that thread was just so heartwarming to read through it was just I, I love hearing what makes people happy and I think Jacqueline from the Brooklyn Knit Book podcast really started she has a different prompt I think she goes what um uh I think yeah it's along the same lines of like what made you happy this week uh or what's making you happy right now and uh the I should announce the winner and stop babbling but uh yeah I give props to Jacqueline for starting that because it's just uh, like so wonderful to open up a, a thread and just read about what, what makes people happy. Uh, and yes, yeah, so this is the skein that uh, Stacy has donated as a giveaway. Let me see if I can get that to focus. So yes, dress knits. Um, and the colorway is called Of Wool and Wine, and which is just perfect. I love it. And it's on her Sparkle Sock, which is 75% 20, 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Gold Stellina. So, super lovely. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all 
awesome. Uh, so yes, okay. So the winner is, let me see, where did I, my show notes, okay. Uh, number 238, TG Knits, and she says uh, what makes her happy, it, uh, what made her happy this past week was uh, spending the day with my teenage daughter shopping for her first bikini without any of the stress I worried it might bring. <laughs> so that is awesome. Uh, I love it. So uh, congrats, uh, TG Knits. Uh, I, I guess contact me on Ravelry. Uh, let me know, just put in the subject that you have won the giveaway prize for the stre uh, Stress Knits. Uh, giveaway and let me know your shipping info and I will get this out to you ASAP. Yay! So thanks so much again Stacy for this wonderful prize. So I actually have a review for you guys this week, uh, which is rare, but when I review something, I review it. Uh, so the lovely and amazing uh, Renee Callahan of East London Knit uh, contacted me. Uh, she just released a new pattern book called uh, The Zen Variations and it's a really beautiful, uh, very, it's thin, but you get six patterns in here, um, really beautiful, beautiful patterns. And uh, she reached out to me, wanted to know if I wanted to review it. So I of course said yes. And she sent me a copy, uh, one for me. And then she also sent, so generously sent another copy for one of you lovely viewers. So thank you so much, Renee. Uh, and yes, I loved flipping through here. Again, it's not by any means a, a tome. It's 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 a thin book, but it has so many wonderful patterns in here for you to choose from. Each pattern starts the same way. Uh, you start from the top down, and then you basically try it on as you go, as you're knitting, uh, which makes it, which I find a lot of people enjoy doing. I, I prefer to knit my sweaters that way because yeah, it's I wanna make sure that it fits as I go. Um, but yeah, she has, I, you can see, like I tabbed off all of my favorite patterns in here. Uh, and the first one is uh, the Enso, which is just like a really beautiful, simple, very, very simple pullover jumper. Um, and I love this detail over here where it just kind of dips down and up. So yeah, it's, it's all in the details, you guys. And she gives like several variations of it. Again, Zen variations. So you can do either like different styles. Uh, here you, well, I don't want to give that away because that's that's part of the pattern. So, um, and then she has the Yama. You know me and my wrap dresses. I could certainly use a wrap cardigan. I really, really love the way this looks. And I believe this is the same pattern as the front. So you can do different versions of it. The schematics in here, everything is just so well written. Everything's so concise. So you're not looking at like pages and pages of pattern. I, I love that. This one's really good. This kind of reminds me of like a very vintage has a very vintage feel to it. The Kaizen. Let's see, it's like pockets. I love pockets. Anything with pockets I love. This one's really fun. It's kind of just like a, a knitted dress, like a short knitted jumper dress with pockets. Again, I love the pockets. This one is the one that I love, that I want to knit almost immediately. Um, again, pockets. Love, love, love the pockets. It has a v-neck and every, this is, this is my jam. I love this pattern so much and I may just have to cast it on once I find the right yarn. So uh, yeah, I, I give this pattern, I, this pattern book so many thumbs up. I, Renee, thank you so much again for sending this to me. Um, I highly recommend it uh, and it's super portable. Again, it's very light. Uh, the quality of the pattern book is very high quality. <laughs> it's uh, very well produced. I, I would also say, you know, you can just leave it out on your coffee table. It's just really wonderful to flip through and everything. So highly recommend this as well. I will link to her shop where you can purchase this. I believe it retails, I, don't quote me on it, I believe it's uh, $20 US from her Etsy shop. So, but I will again post a link to uh, where you can purchase this. Uh, so again, thank you so much, Renee. This is really fun to get in the mail and I will post a thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry group where you can enter to win a copy and I will put a prompt there. Okay, so I guess I will create a new segment called I Wanna Cast It On because <laughs> I feel like everyone else has a segment where they just talk about their dream knits and things that they want to cast on and I feel like I've never really chatted about that, about the things that I really wanna cast on or planning to. Uh, so I'm gonna start it now. I wanna cast it on. Uh, yeah, and that is, uh, as I mentioned, the Fairy Hill Shawl. I obviously want to cast that on, uh, but I have been watching Ellie from the Skein Dare Knits podcast, uh, which is a one, uh, it's, words cannot describe how awesome her podcast is. I love, like, she's just, she's so excited about color work projects, and that's her, that's her jam. Color work is, 
she she loves doing color work like traditional knits and everything and it's just so inspiring to watch her just crank out all these color work projects week after week and yeah so she definitely it's been so long since i've worked on a color work project and i really do enjoy it um so she's definitely really inspiring me to want to cast on a whole bunch of things and she, one of them uh which i immediately fell in love with as soon as she showed it off on her podcast is and i'm totally gonna butcher this <sighs> so bear with me uh i think it's i believe it's pronounced uh Damiaka Lopa, which uh, is, I believe it translates as flea. So it's uh, in I believe, like traditional hand knits that incorporate uh, color work. Uh, like those, if you have like a main color on a jumper or cardigan, and then you have a contrasting color and little dots across the sweater, that's what uh, I believe in, Nor in Norwegian, they refer, or Norway, they refer to those as fleas, like that's the motif. So, uh, which I think is really cute. Uh, but uh, this pattern by uh, Pinne Guri, who is uh, the needle lady on Ravelry, uh, has this beautiful cardigan. Um, it's color work and yeah, it has the flea motif going throughout, but then it has like this really gorgeous yoke of just beautiful color work. And I saw it and I, I just, I pretty much just immediately purchased or like went on the web to look for yarn for it and it's knit in Jameson Spindrift so I found a color scheme that I really liked I laid it all out I did a whole Photoshop you know cutting and pasting the different color the colorways next to each other and found a color scheme that I liked and just purchased the yarn so <laughs> impulse buy completely uh, and yeah because one shop didn't have all the colorways that I wanted or needed. I did two separate purchases, um, which is hilarious and scary. But um, yeah, so I have those coming to me. They should be here today. I was debating whether or not to hold off on recording until they got here, but I'll, I'll just post a photo um, of the yarn here if it does get here, But um, and, and the cardigan, but I cannot wait to cast on you guys. Um, I might have to cast on immediately. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I will probably have to do a swatch. But the other kicker about this pattern is that it is it is a steaked cardigan. I've never done any steaking before. I'm not freaked out about it. I, I know I can do it. I just have to watch some tutorials on YouTube. Uh, but I'm I'm prepared to do it. I I'm not sweating bullets or anything. No, I'm maybe maybe a year ago I might have, but I'm I'm just gonna dive in. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna steak a cardigan and not sweat about it. Not sweat it. So. Uh, Stay tuned for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes down, but uh, I can't wait. Um, and the other thing that I want to cast on uh, is a, a hat, another color work hat, uh, using the Tuku wool that I purchased at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Uh, and this would qualify for a move along, actually, for the move along. And I should probably mention the pattern that would be helpful and put a photo of it so you know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's a more it's called the More Sunny Days Hat by Olga Beckman, and it's a color work pattern, as these color choices suggest. And yeah, it's it's just a simple. I don't know if it's simple, but you know, just a really cute slouchy color work hat that I want to cast on immediately. So I don't know, I'll, I'll spill it out. Maybe I'll cast that on today. Um, you know, just to treat myself for finishing, for finishing that, uh, finishing my snow melt. So we shall see. Uh, yes. So uh, anyway, all the things cast on all the things, right? Um, so yes. Okay. That is it for what I've been working on, what I want in it. And then I guess I will move along to sewing <laughs> because I have a finished object um, and I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it and I'm very happy and pleased with it. Uh, this is the Lady Skater dress uh, by Kitchi Koo. It's, I believe their website is kitchi-koo.co.co.uk. That you can, I don't know. I'll post a link in the show notes <laughs> so you can easily find it. But yes, it's a wonderful pattern, super easy. Uh, I made one a couple, I want to say like last month, I made one uh, out of pink bat fabric, and I love it. It's such an enjoyable, quick sew. I, I want to say that I whipped this up in two and a half hours, uh, and I want to say that I did that only because I had the pattern pieces all cut out and I already made another version, so I knew what was coming. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I want to say like the first one took me about four hours total because, but now that I knew like the process and everything, I didn't have to refer to the notes as much. 
or the pattern as much so uh this came together very quickly uh and yeah this is jersey fabric it has little octopi on it octopus squid i, th I think they're I, I believe that they're squid um I'm sorry, uh, I, I believe that these little guys here are octopus because they don't really have, I know squid has like that triangular head, um, these have circular heads, so I don't know, any squid or octopus experts out there, can you please inform me what kind of creatures, sea creatures these are, because I, I'm not a scientist. Um, but it's done, and I love it. Uh, I will say this jersey, it doesn't have much stretch to it. I'm not sure what, I want to call it Pontaroma, I, that it could be totally wrong, uh, but it, yeah, it's a very dense type of jersey and it doesn't have very much stretch, so it is a little loose on me. Uh, it, I want to say it has a little bit of ease right here, uh, but yeah, I think it fits very well. It's very comfortable, it's, uh, perfect for summer, and then the sleeves, sleeves are a little loose, I don't know, they're fine, they fit though. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, and yeah, the only thing I would say I would do differently next time I sew this is uh, there it, it calls for a 3 8 seam allowance. Uh, and for the waist, I think I'll go up to a 5 8 seam allowance just because I feel like the waist is very low on this. Like it just, I mean, I already did it. I did a 5 8 seam allowance, so it falls right on the curve of my waist. Uh, but before it was kind of like hanging down low, so I redid it. Um, and then I, I will also go back and shorten the length of the hem because it is quite a little bit long. I think it falls like right above my knee, which is fine. Uh, but normally I like wearing these dresses over black leggings. So I find that's just a little bit too long. So I might just um, hem it about like maybe three inches. So uh, yeah, but otherwise I like it. I want to make more and I highly recommend the pattern. Uh, so, but also on the the make list I, oh i'm gonna be making more of these obviously but um i had ordered some more fabric from fabric.com and i plan on making uh some hoodies <laughs> because uh summer is coming and we go up to cape cod a lot and it's it's kind of chilly up there like at night on the beach even on the beach it can be it can be quite chilly like there are days where it's really hot but then there are days when it's just super windy and I need I need a hoodie just to keep the wind out of my face or whatever. So I, I practically live in them when we're up there. And I have this one hoodie that I purchased from H&M years ago and it has since bit in the dust. Uh, it just, I, I wore the heck out of this thing and I haven't been able to find a hoodie that I really like. I mean, it's a hoodie, right? Like what, what could you possibly be looking for? Um, but. I have, I, get, I don't know, it's like every hoodie that I find just doesn't really suit my style or anything, the color or, I don't know. Anyway, I looked on fabric.com and I found some fabrics that I really liked, so I purchased them. And then I also am going to purchase the, um, what is it, the Quick Sew. They have a, a really cool hoodie fabric, or a, a really neat hoodie pattern that seems fairly simple. Uh, it's by Quick Sew, uh, K3678. Uh, there are two variations of it, uh, and I kind of want to franken piece both variations because I love the cuffs and the waistband on, I believe, View B, but I want the hoodie from View A, if that makes any sense. I'll try and insert a photo here so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, the fabric's supposed to be coming today. I cannot wait. Uh, I might just get a start on that, uh, but then I have to print out the pattern, cut out all the pieces, piece it together, and do all that fun stuff. But anyway, um, I can at least get it started. So that is pretty much sewing for this week. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So okay, I think I'm going to move along to shop update. So if you would like to stick around for that, stick around. If you if you would not like to stick around for that because you don't care about shop update and yarn totally get it it's fine i will see you next week happy knitting thank you so much for watching uh but yes uh i'm gonna talk shop so unfortunately no shop update tomorrow uh only because i took a couple of days off this week uh so no real dyeing was was done uh for the shop but uh, as i have been teasing uh the past couple of weeks kelsey from primrose yarn company and i have joined our dyer, indie dyer forces we've come together and are doing a collaboration so we are both dyeing uh, a li very limited edition colorway and we will be selling uh, both colorways in our own shops, respective shops as a set. So um, I'm sending 50 skeins to her and she's sending 50 skeins to me and uh, we're gonna sell 
our colorways together uh, as a pair. So very excited about it. She's, uh, if you follow us on both on Instagram, uh, you'll get a sneak peek of what her colorways look like and what mine looks like. Uh, I skeined up mine today. Uh, I haven't finished dyeing all of them, but uh, here's what I have dyed so far. I haven't named them yet either, but uh, our, the theme was neon. So we decided, you know, cause it's summer and we just want to have a little fun with neon colorways and dyes. Uh, here's, here's what mine look like. And we, we are both doing, uh, we're both dying on, uh, what is it? Superwash, uh, Merino Nylon Cashmere. So I have my Volca base and then she will be dying hers on her Sophie base. Um, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's obviously out of my comfort zone, but again, it's like, it's summer and it's so fun and why not? Right. Uh, and here's what it looks like with the label on. So very, very happy with the way this turned out. So I'm very excited about this collaboration, you guys. I don't know about you, but, uh, yes. And uh, those skeins, uh, our, our collaboration skeins will be on sale on uh, June 5th. So as far as what time all these skeins will be going on sale, uh, still TBD. So uh, do watch this space, follow us on social media, and we will keep you informed. So yes, um, I'm trying to think what else. That is it. So hope you guys can make it next week. Again, my next drop update will be on Friday, May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So hope you can make that. Uh, and until then, uh, I will be busy getting back to the dye pots. Okay, moving along to blather. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> what's going on in my life. This weekend is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day in advance to all the wonderful mothers out there. Uh, I don't really know what my plans are for Mother's Day, uh, but I know that I want to get together obviously with uh, my parents. Uh, I might because Dennis has some stuff going on, I'm probably gonna hop a train on Sunday and head up to visit my mom. Uh, she, as I mentioned a couple of, several episodes ago, she purchased a new sewing machine and I told her, I said, I, I will come up there and show you how to use it. That will be my Mother's Day gift to you to show you how to sew. So um, I'm just kind of currently on the prowl for beginner, like super beginner uh, sewing projects, uh, something that I can quickly, cause I won't have like too much time up there with her, um, you know, probably, you know, just spend the day up there. But, um, so, you know, I'm just kind of browsing Pinterest for some quick, like, w like one to two hour sewing projects. Maybe I'll start her off with like a project bag or something, um, just to get her, get her feet wet, you know? Uh, so other than that, it's just been a really, really chill week. Uh, no news is good news, I guess. Right. So, uh, journaling still going strong. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it just every day, just doing a brain dump and just getting it all on paper. And then, <sighs> having fun. So, um, yeah, other than that, I think I will end it there. Uh, so that said, happy mother's day again. Uh, and I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Thanks so much for watching and happy knitting. <laughs> Bye. Ba -da -da -ba. the space uh i blah 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 bl